I love this whole idea of public art. Public art builds community in Grand Rapids and on the sidewalk in Two Harbors. Every little bit, I think we're a little bit closer, but we're nowhere near finished. <laughs> it's our first time doing chalk art, though, so we're kind of figuring it out as we go. The Sacred Heart has a, a very distinct signature, you know, acoustically. At Sacred Heart Music Center, it's about the sound and Eric Swanson's skill. I should be loving you. And the Christopher David Hansen Band brings soul to Minnesota music. I should be loving you. These stories and more on this edition of The Playlist. Funding for The Playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. going to roll through some songs for you guys, get as much in there as we can. Unless it's to say something, tell me I'm out of my head. Well, why you running, can you stay, mama? You got the cold in my bed Oh, now the left is to say something Tell me I'm out of my head Oh, why you running? Can't you stay? My mom gets kind of cold in my bed Oh, she treads like the honey from Clover And I sit down
I guess I kind of like this angle right here. Oh, this is pretty good too. This sculpture right here is apparently a pig jumping over the moon. My name is Steve Downing. I am the arts producer here for Northern Community Radio. I love this whole idea of public art. There's nothing highbrow about this art now. Very accessible. Well, it was kind of an artificial decision to name a favorite, so I, I picked this one because this is where I sit for the annual Mississippi River Festival. So I'm used to seeing it. It's, I, I feel kind of proprietary about it, I guess. I think good public art, it's permanent, it's approachable, it's fun or funny, and it's just always there. It reminds you as you're moving around a community that there is an, an arts force at work here. Art is key to community. We're here at the Sacred Heart Music Center in Duluth with Eric Swanson. I would call him the maestro of Sacred Heart. Thank you for having us in your beautiful space. Oh, welcome. Glad to have you here. You are the maestro. That's what I'll call you. I wear a bunch of hats. Um, my main thing is I, I run the Sacred Heart Recording Studio. Uh, um, so I'm the chief engineer of that. I'm also the director of the Sacred Heart Music Center, which is the nonprofit that owns and operates the building. And then I also facilitate and instruct at the Music Resource Center, which is a, another after-school music program administrated by the uh, Armory Arts and Music Center. They get a lot out of you. <laughs> I'm a busy man, I am. We hear in the background some construction. Yes. And, uh, tell us a little bit about Sacred Heart. It's not a brand new building. No, Sacred Heart is uh, the, the old Catholic cathedral in town. It's built, built in 1894. Uh, it houses one of the oldest, if not the oldest, pipe organ in Minnesota. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. It has a marvelous acoustics, and you, can, you just can't replace a space like this. So what are they actually working on up there? Uh, one of the rooms upstairs is being uh, uh, repaired and retrofitted to become a little recording booth for the Music Resource Center. The, the Music Resource Center is not a like a, a traditional curriculum based music education thing. It's more uh, kids can come here, they have all these resources available to them, they can, they can play, they can hang out with other kids their own age that they might not meet. They get to learn how to record, they get to, to learn how to write songs, they have access to all kinds of instruments and technology that, you know, a lot of these kids are low income, uh, underprivileged perhaps, that, that don't, would not have access to that kind of uh, situation otherwise. Power of music, somehow it, it got you. Tell me a little bit about how you ended up in the sound engineering, sound oh, recording world. I, I, I don't know. I, I've always liked music and sound since I was a kid. My dad had a wire recorder, which was predated tape recorders, two little spools of wire that you could magnetically record on with a microphone and play it back. And I was fascinated by that. I grew up in the 60s and music was very, very important. Then I was, I was uh, very uh, taken by the whole you know the Beatles and the Stones and then you know Motown and all that stuff and you know I could play I could play music but I was never a great player I was always kind of I found a way to be involved was to be more involved with the tech, technical end of it. I know you took a trip out to the west coast how did what's I, that journey I, like? I grew up in Duluth I'm originally from Iowa City Iowa but I grew up in Duluth I spent the whole decade of the 80s in Los Angeles working for the music business in one form or another and touring around the world with various bands and came back here and did more music and um, uh, live sound, a lot of live sound, also touring around the country quite a bit. We started the recording studio in 2001, so I've mostly concentrated on that since then. You started out with a, you know, with a vision and a, I think we can do this and obviously a lot of experience, but then 
what's happened with well, that? Well, you know, luckily at the time, the, the time the studio started, the music scene Duluth was really happening right around 2000, 2001, 2002. The North Shore was going great guns and the whole Duluth does Dylan thing had happened and we were getting a lot of press. And so we all decided that uh, we needed some way to document all this stuff that was going on. And so the, the just through a bunch of interesting circumstances, the equipment became available, the space became available, I became available, and the things kind of all fell into place. What kind of character is Sacred Heart in that? Well, okay, it, Sacred Heart has a, a very distinct signature, you know, acoustically. Um, you can certainly tell records that have been recorded here. The building was, as a church, was built for the pipe organ and choirs, and they both sound sublime. The organ especially sounds sublime in this room. Cello and piano, sonata and uh, string quartets and other um, solo flute recordings, you know, things like that. It all just sound amazing in here. Native flute sounds really great in here. I practically had to drag Keith Sicola out of here because he got in here with his flute and it was just so tripping on the place. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to help people, you know, realize their dreams, you know, and make records. Well, thank you very much for your work. I appreciate well, thank it. Thank you. Appreciate it. You know, everyone, everyone likes chalk. We weren't expecting to do this today. It was my brainchild. I have an interest in lizards. Lately, I've just been into um, aquatic things. We're part of the Two Harbors Farmers Market, so we're drawing a lot of uh, produce and things that grow in the area. We've got a, almost 55 people signed up, so uh, we're hoping to get 80. We might. We're still going to be here tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll get 30 more. It's great to see the whole. Uh, everyone's out kids, adults, seems like everyone's having a, a great time and enjoying it. The rules are you can't do anything that's going to be advertising. You can't do anything, of course, that's going to seem offensive to somebody. Um, you can't use fixatives. You have to just use the chalk and water. Um, it's $15 to get one of these, and you get the box of chalk. I think it's a really good deal. When you get the chalk down, you put it down, and it just, it'll just kind of blow away. So I want to get it down, and then kind of just rub it in a little bit. It gets it set to the pavement. It takes it from looking like a sidewalk chalk to something that's got pigment, covers the whole thing, and it's going to stay there for a while. The wind's not going to blow it away. Well, as I was thinking about wanting to do this, I thought it would be a good idea to recreate one of the stained glass windows from the church, which is right across the street here. None of us are claiming artistic talent. <laughs> we, uh, we're using a grid system, so basically what you do is you grid your picture, you grid the sidewalk, and you draw the lines in the square, that in this, appear in this square, in these squares. I'm pleased so far. It's, it's kind of looking like the, the picture and, um, you know, it's nice to see some colors coming coming into it now. And I'm a graphic designer on the side, grow produce and part of the farmers market. And we're just a part of the chalk lot event today. It's our first time doing chalk art though, so we're kind of figuring it out as we go. It's getting there. Every little bit, I think we're a little bit closer, but we're nowhere near finished. <laughs> We probably have about six hours into it, roughly, at this point. Edward Scissorhands. Um, I liked the movie. Uh, I also was kind of looking for something that was just kind of a cool picture, something that would uh, grab people's attention, something that grabbed my attention. Well, the good part is, is when I'm completely done, I'll take my, my sample away, and, uh, and it'll look like it was supposed to just kind of blend the purple down here. Concrete can just have so many different textures to it. It's kind of nice, like you could have something really soft like this and then make it look, you know, pretty grainy here with the white. So that's what I like about it. I'm really liking how it's coming out. Eventually you just, yeah, time's up. And I'll stop.
I know there's something about making something on sidewalk and having to leave it and then many people can just see it randomly, they might not expect it and that's kind of one of the cool things about I think chalk art is, you know, it's just there, you come across it, you're not expecting it. Why do I do it? It's kind of fun, um, people appreciate it, you know, I hope people appreciate it, it seems like they do when they walk by. Um, People think it's cool. I enjoy doing it. You know, it's fun to create something. You look at it and you think, wow, it actually worked out. It turned out. This is what I had in mind. Yeah. Something inspired by mosaics and just little squiggly do's of design. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, I struggled a little bit with the detail, but um, just blended it together and I, I think it turned out great. You just have to do it. Just, just try your best and and do it. Don't doubt yourself, I guess, and you'll do well. <laughs>
just get past the boat. You can hear it in the guitar tone. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a sucker for a girl in red. Yeah, she's tearing up my mind. And I should be loving you. And I want to be straight with you. I'm Christopher David Hansen. I sing and write songs and play guitar. Well, I'd seen uh, Craig and Sean, uh, our drummer and our bass player, playing out in, in other bands around the Iron Range area and stuff. And uh, I sobered up about 18 months ago, and we all just got together and, and uh, wrote a bunch of songs, and the chemistry was there. It felt good, so. Ryan, Ryan, I go. Gentle bit I ain't fit to hide. Well, this, this, we're all friends. It's like family. We just we get to we we would do this even if we weren't playing out. It's just you know, it's just it feels good. Yeah. Ain't fit to be tied. Ain't fit to hide. It comes from a different spot every time. But a lot of these songs came from just cleaning up and, and really doing a lot of soul searching and, and, and trying not to fit any genre at all. I, I try to come with just an open mind and let the song do its own thing and try not to strangle it too much. She's always worth the way. From my vantage point on stage, I see a lot of smiles and dancing people. And that's, that's, really, that's really what we're going for. Is, Make people happy, make them forget they got a job for a night. Whatever it does, it does. And when it, whenever I d decided in the past to control the way things work out, they never work out that way. So I just let things flow. Whatever, whatever it, opportunities come, we'll weigh them at that time and see, you know, do what feels good. <laughs> Yeah. 
can laugh And I could tell that she was never coming back yeah. It's driving me out of my mind Can't get it out of my head I won't be needing my heart anymore Tonight I'm taking this bottle to bed have expected this A lot of signs that I chose to miss And it was in her eyes It was in her kiss Oh, now, now I don't feel like going now, God Too many things I want to shout about And I need a drink there ain't no doubt It's driving me out of my mind Can't get it out of my head I won't be needing my heart anymore Tonight I'm taking this bottle to bed And there ain't nobody home, no, no Thank you.